All right, so let's go ahead and move on to unit four now, which is all about um, the basics of functions. And we're going to get started with this uh, section that's titled Relations and Functions. Okay, so we're going to look at uh, what domain and range is. We're going to look at the difference between um, a relation and a function. And then um, if things are functions, then we're going to look at what it means to be a one-to-one -one function. Okay, so starting off, we first need to know what the domain and the range is of any relation. Okay, and the domain is the set of all possible inputs. Okay, the set of all possible inputs. Okay, so basically this is what gets plugged in. Okay, what gets plugged in. Okay, or you can think of it as the first number in an ordered pair. First number in an ordered pair. Okay, so the domain is the set of all possible inputs, what gets plugged in, and the first number in an ordered pair, which means that the range is the set of all possible outputs. Okay, so that would be what comes out of the function once we plug something in, um, and it's the second number in an ordered pair. Okay, so this is the set of all possible outcomes or outputs. Let's say outputs. That's a better way of saying that. Outputs. Okay, and this is what comes out. Okay, or what we get, what the result of plugging something in is. Okay. And this is the second number in an ordered pair. Okay. So it's important for us to be able to identify what are all the possible values that can go into a function, um, or in other words, what is that function or relation defined as, okay, all possible inputs, and then what are all possible outputs, which is our domain range. Okay, so let's look at a couple of examples. So all we want to do is determine the domain, wow, wow. We want to determine the domain and range um, of this um, uh, values within the table or chart or order pairs or however they represent it. Okay, so on this first one, we can see we have input values and output values. So this is really easy, right? Our domain we know is our input values, and we're going to write it in set notation. So this is all possible input values. Now notice there are some repeats. <coughs> we don't have to list the repeats, um, but we should always list our domain values in order from smallest to largest. So the smallest of our input values here is negative 4. Okay. And then our next one would be 2, and then 3, and then 5, and then 7. Okay, So these are all possible domain values. Then we want to look at our range values. Range values are all possible outputs. And again, we always want to write them from smallest to largest. So our smallest number here is negative 8. Then our next one would be negative 1, then 0 then three, four, and six. Three, four, and six. And it's just as easy as that. Okay, identifying inputs and outputs relates to our domain and range. Okay, same thing is true whenever we have um, a table, a table of values. Okay, our x's are inputs and our y's are our outputs. Or in other words, this is gonna be all of our domain values and this is going to be all of our range values. Okay, So here, my domain values are negative 6, negative 3, 7, and 2. And I want to make sure that I list those in the correct order. So smallest number would be negative 6, then negative 3, then 2, then 7. Okay, My range values are all possible outputs would be 2, negative 6, 4, and negative 10. And again, I want to list these from smallest to largest. My smallest is negative 10, then negative 6, then 2, then 4. Okay, and we just identify our answer. Not too bad? All right, 
So then we want to look at it when they're written as ordered pairs. Now, as they're written as ordered pairs, we can think about them in a table, right? Because this is an x value, this is a y value, this is an x value, this is a y value, this is an x value, this is a y value, this is an x value, this is a y value, right? So all of our inputs, right, or our x's are our domain values, right? And all of our outputs or our y values are our range values, okay? So if it helps you to label them like that, go ahead and do that. Um, but we still want to list them in set notation like we did up here. So our domain is all possible x's. So that's the first order in these, or sorry, the first value in these ordered pairs. So negative 5, 2, 4, and 9. And notice those are already in the right order. So I'm just going to list negative 5, 2, 4, and 9. Okay. And then our range values is all possible y values, are all possible um, outputs. So we have 0, 3, negative 9, and 0. So I want to write those in the correct order. So the smallest of all my y values here is negative 9, and then 0, and then 3. And even though some of these have the same y values, I only have to list it on my possible outputs once. Okay, Not too bad? All right, so I want to look at a couple of other things. This is all of our domain and range. Now we want to look at the difference between a relation and a function. Okay, A relation is any set of inputs and outputs. Okay, any set of inputs and outputs. Okay, let me focus this, hold on just a second. It seemed a little blurry. Okay, any set of inputs and outputs, okay, or any ordered pairs. Okay, this could be represented as a chart, as a table, as a list of ordered pairs, but it's any, any set of ordered pairs, any table of values, any chart, any XY table, okay? A function is a relation, right, because it's a set of inputs and outputs, but it's a special relation, special relation, where each input has only one output. Each input has only one output, okay? Or in other words, each x has only one y, okay? All right, and the way that we can test to see if, um, if a picture, if we have a picture of the relationship, um, if it is a function, we can do what's called the vertical line test, okay? And if I draw a vertical line, here, let me write that, draw a verti, verti, a vertical line, <laughs> draw a vertical line. If the line <coughs> crosses the graph in more then one spot, then it fails, okay? It fails the vertical line test, and that means it is not a function, okay? So to use the vertical line test, we're checking, oh, that is just a horrible S, let me try again, there we go. Um, when we're using the vertical line test, we're gonna draw any vertical line, okay? It has to work for any vertical line, and if a vertical line hits our graph in just one spot, then it's a function. But if it hits more than one spot on any vertical line, then it fails and it's not a function. Okay? So let's just go ahead and determine if the following relations represent functions. So notice the only difference between a relation and a function is that functions, their x's can be tied to only one y. Or every input has to have just an individual output. Okay? So let's look at this first table. I look at all of my inputs. 5 goes to 0, negative 4 goes to 4, 
2 goes to negative 1, 3 goes to negative 8, negative 4 goes to 3, and 7 goes to 6. So right away I can tell this is not a function because I have an input value that has more than one output. Does that make sense? Because here it's saying negative 4's output is 4, and over here it's saying negative 4's output is 3. Well, it can't have more than one output and still be a function. So we're going to say no, this does not represent a function, because negative 4 is going to 4 and it's also being sent to 3. Okay, it has two outputs. So this one would just be a relation. Okay, let's look at this table over here to see if it's a function. So negative 6 is tied to 2, negative 3 is tied to negative 6, 7 is tied to 4, and 2 is tied to negative 10. So notice all of my inputs are only tied to one output, right? So here, yes, this would be a function. Function, okay. Let's look at this set of ordered pairs. If I look at this set of ordered pairs, I want to make sure each of my x's get only one y. So if I look at my, here's my x values, and I can see right away that none of my x values are repeated, right? Negative 5 goes to 0, 2 goes to 3, 4 goes to negative 9, and 9 goes to 0. So because all of my x values are not getting repeated, then it's not possible that they go more than one place or that they get tied to more than one number. So here, yes, this is also a function, okay? Because every x is being uh, paired with only one y, okay? Then let's look at our uh, visuals, okay? Our graphs here. If I wanna check to see if it's a function, it has to pass the vertical line test. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a vertical line. Look, if I draw a vertical line right here, notice it's only hitting at one spot on this circle. So that passes, but it has to work for any vertical line. And if I draw a vertical line a little bit over, pretend that's vertical, it's horribly not straight. Let me try again. <coughs> eh, still kind of not great. But if, it, if I draw this vertical line, notice it's going to hit twice. So if it hits twice, then it fails the vertical line test. Fails vertical line test. And this would be a no, okay? This is not a function, which means that this one is a relation, okay? Just a relation. If I look at this one, if I draw a vertical line anywhere on here, notice it's only going to hit one time. So if my vertical line only gets one hit on my graph, then it passes the vertical line test. And that means that, yes, it is a function, okay? Same thing on this last one. If I draw any vertical line, notice there are vertical lines that will hit more than once. So this one fails the vertical line test, which means that no, it's not a function, which means that it's just a relation. Okay. All right. So on the next page, there are th four, th four <laughs> for you to try. So go ahead and take a few minutes to work on um, these four. Just determine if they represent a function. You can just say yes or no, or you can write function or relation, whatever, next to them. Um, and then whenever you're ready to check yourself, uh, go ahead and unpause your video and we'll go over them, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and talk through these examples. On the first one, we can see that yes, this is a function because none of our input values are going more going to more than one output value, right? Five goes only to negative nine, negative three goes only to zero, eight goes only to negative one, positive three goes only to zero, negative five goes only to three, and seven goes to only six. Now it doesn't matter that negative three and three are both going to zero. It doesn't matter that that gets repeated. In order for it to be a function, we're just saying that those can only go one place. Right? They could all have zeros down here as their output, but as long as they just have one output, then it's a function. Okay. Um, number two, this does not pass the vertical line because if I were to draw a vertical line right here, notice it hits a point on the line and it hits a point on that dot. So no, this is not a function, it's a relation. 
Then I look at my next uh, ordered pair here. If I look at every x value, I have a negative 2, I have a 2, I have a 4, and I have a negative 4. So none of my x's are repeated, right? Which means none of my x's are, are being paired with more than one number. So we can assume that, yes, this is a function, okay? And then if I do the vertical line test on this last uh, graph, notice anywhere I draw a vertical line on here, it's only going to hit one time. So yes, this is also a function, okay? All right, so now that we know how to find domain and we know how to find range, the last thing we need to look at, oh, sorry, and we also know how to identify now if something is a relation or if it's a function, then we want to go a little bit further. And once we identify that something is a function, meaning no x's are getting repeated, right? Every x goes to specifically one output. Then there is a very special type of function called a one-to-one -one function. And this is where each output is paired with exactly one input, okay? This is where each output is now paired exactly with one input, okay? And the way I like to describe this is, when you think of relations, think of relationships. Guys and girls can have relationships with lots of guys and girls, right? Girls can date lots of guys, guys can date lots of girls. That's relationships, right? There's swingers, there's polygamists, there's all kinds of craziness where there's no real bounds. It's just as long as they're having a relationship, it's a relation, right? Then we look at a function. A function is where you have one committed person, <laughs> meaning that your ex or your boy, we'll say, your boy is dating specifically one girl, okay? You have a one-sided commitment here. He's not dating more than one girl. He's dating only one girl, okay? That's a function. Now, to be a one-to-one -one function, not only is the boy dating one specific girl, but that specific girl is only dating that guy, meaning it's monogamous. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay, so in a function, um, John could be dating Mary, and Ed could be dating Mary. And as long as they're only dating one girl, it's still a function. They could all be dating Mary. Hopefully, Mary's not that kind of girl, but it could happen, and that's a function, okay? Now, in a one-to-one -one function, if John is dating Mary, then that means Fred has to be dating somebody else. Fred has to be dating Susie or something, okay? Does that make sense? So a one-to-one -one function means that every X is tied to only one Y, and that Y is tied only back to that X, okay? Off the market is what that means. So the way that we test that relationship is first we have to identify that the graph or the chart or the table or the order pair or whatever we're given is a function, meaning no X gets repeated. Then once we know it's a function, then we check to see if it's a one-to-one -one function by making sure the Y is not repeated. And the way that we make sure that the Y is not repeated on, um, a graph or a picture is we do a horizontal line test, okay? Same idea as a vertical line test, but now we're just checking to make sure no Y is repeated. So we're going to draw a horizontal line, and if it hits more than once, then that is a fail, and it means it's not a one to one function, okay? And the way I described it <laughs> might be helpful because if we're talking about every man <laughs> needing to date one woman and that one woman only needing to be dating that same man, we're really checking to see if she is a, well, let's just say we're gonna do the horizontal line test to check, okay? Okay, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and look at these. So first, um, before we check to see if something's one-to-one, -one, we need to first check to see if it's even a function. Because if it's not a function, then it's not a one-to-one -one function. So first we're gonna determine, is it a function or a relation? And then if it's a function, then we also need to determine if it's one-to-one, -one, okay? So again, 
When we look at this, we're looking at our inputs. Is every input tied to only one output? So 25 goes only to negative 3, negative 8 goes only to 4, 12 goes to negative 4, 3 goes to negative 8, negative 4 goes to negative 3, and 7 goes to 6. So notice, none of my x's are repeated. Yay, so that means this is a function, okay? So now that we know it's a function, now we want to check to see if it's a one-to-one -one function. So now we have to look at all the outputs. Are there any outputs repeated here? Are there any girls that happen to be dating more than one boy, right? Well, yes. Here this says that number 25 man is dating number negative three girl. But oh, number negative four man is also dating number negative three girl. So because we have um, a repeated output, this is not one to one. Not one to one. She did not pass the horizontal line test. Okay, so let's look at our next one. First thing we determine, are there any X's being repeated? So negative seven, two, four, and nine. No X is repeated. So that means that this is a function, yay. And then we need to see, okay, well, are there any outputs or any Y's being repeated? Zero, three, negative nine, and one. There's no Y's being, being repeated. So that means that this function is also a one-to-one -one function. Okay, and this is the little shorthand notion, uh, notation for one to one. We just put one dash one. Okay, all right, let's look at this one. When I look at this one, first thing, I have to determine if it's a function. So I look at my X's. Are there any X's uh, repeated? And yes, we see right away, this one and this one have the same X value and they're getting sent different places. Okay, so I'm just gonna put on here, we have repeated X's. So because we have repeated x's, we know this is not a function. So this is only a relation. So because it's a relation, we don't even care if it's one to one. We only care if it's one to one if it's a function. So because this is not a function, we move on to the next one. Okay, I look at this one. Are there any x's repeated? Negative five, five, zero, negative two. No x is repeated. That means that there is a function here. Okay, then we want to see, is it a monogamous relationship between these X's and Y's? Do we have any Y's repeated? Zero, negative five, five, and one. None of those Y's are repeated, so that means this is also a one-to-one. -one. Okay, all right, when I look at my last one, I'm checking, do I have any X's repeated? And I do, right? I have one being tied to one, and I have one being tied to two. Because we have repeated x's, that means this is not a function. So this one is just a relation, okay? All right, I wanna show you a couple of examples with graphs, and then I will have y'all try some, okay? So when we look at graphs, trying to determine if they are one-to-one, -one, again, same thing. We have to determine first if they're a function, and then if they're a function, then we can determine if they're one-to-one, -one, okay? So let's look at this first one, and I'm sorry, my graphs are kind of hard to see on this video. I'll trace over them really quick, and that might make them easier to see. Okay, so on this first one, I need to determine if it's a function. Remember, function to see if any X's are getting repeated, we do a vertical line test. So if I do a vertical line test anywhere on this graph, right, notice it's only hitting at one point. So that's good, okay? This vertical line test means that this is a function. Yay, right? But then we wanna do a horizontal line test to see if it's one-to-one. -one. And notice if I draw a horizontal line test, it's gonna hit twice, right, two spots. So this means that it is not one-to-one. -one because it does not pass the horizontal line test because it has repeated y values. So this one is only a function, not one to one, okay? Let's look at our next one. If I draw a horizontal, I'm sorry, a vertical line test on this one, it's only gonna hit at one place on the graph. So that means that this is a function, yay. And then we wanna try the horizontal line test. And notice if I draw a horizontal line test on this one, it also will only hit one time. So that means this one is also one-to-one. -one. 
It's a function and it happens to be a one-to-one -one function. Okay. And then if I look at this last one, if I were to draw a vertical line right down on top of this vertical line, notice what would happen is it would hit at every single point down this line. And in order to be a function, it can only hit one time when I draw a vertical line. So because this would hit at every single point if I drew a vertical line right here, then this fails. And this means that this one is only a relation. And because it's a relation, we don't even check for one-to-one. -one. We only check for one-to-one -one if it's a function. Okay. All right. So there are five for y'all to do. I'm going to give you a second, pause the video, work these out, and then play it again when you're ready to be checked. All right, so if we look at these practice problems, the first one is a function because it passes the vertical line test. It also passes the horizontal line test, so we know it's also one-to-one. -one. Okay, on our second one, it does pass the vertical line test, which means it's a function, but notice if I were to draw a horizontal line right here where our line is, it would hit at every single point, which means it's not going to pass the horizontal line test, which means it's not one-to-one. -one, okay. When I look at number three, it has repeating x values, so it's a relation, not a function. When I look at number four, it has repeating y values. Now, because it didn't have any repeating x values, we know it's a function, but because it has repeating y values, we know it's not one-to-one. -one, okay? And then our last one is also not a function because it has repeating x values. My first point and my last point have an x value of six, so that makes it a relation. Okay. All right, so that is the end of relations and functions. So you should now be able to complete that assignment in your uh, Newton assignments. If you have any questions, please let me know.